Hello and welcome. Can we celebrate God today? He's a good God. We love you, Lord. Come on, church. Can we celebrate the Lord today? Amen. Welcome, South Shore. God bless you. God bless you. Would you welcome my wife, Tamara? God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Delighted to be with you. We're in a series now uh, called Re-Engage. We're talking about marriage, but we also want all of you to understand. Singles, if you're, you're single again, uh, if you happen to be widowed, uh, th this is for you. Everything that we are doing is for you. And uh, right out of the gate, we wanted to start and pray. How about we begin like that? Father, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity to be in front of you. We pray that we'd be able to get out of the way and that your spirit would be able to communicate to the inside of us and that we would leave here changed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to welcome you, especially if you are our guest this weekend, to say that we're so glad you're here and to just give you a little bit of information that Greg and I have been married for 24 years. And thank you. We have um, four kids. I, I mean, I gave birth to three and then one got married. So we have four kids. Um, Zeke is seven. No, he's not. Why would I say that? <laughs> he's that is 11. weird. <laughs> Zeke is 11. Lainey is 17. And our daughter, Tori, is 21. And she is married to Trent. And we are very excited because Pastor Trent was leading our middle school ministry. And now he has stepped up to lead the entire um, student ministry department. So we're very excited about that. Amen. <laughs> Unit, kind of a unit philosophy there a bunch of people is going to be a fantastic job he's going to do we're excited for him to take that over all right so what we want you to know right sort of from the beginning of the message is that we're working from a process orientation okay um, we have disagreements just like you have disagreements everybody uh, in the crowd today agree that we all have disagreements okay our disagreements uh, they often uh, are surrounded around four things, money, any, anybody have issues with that, intimacy, food in our household, <laughs> I'll explain, and schedule, schedule, money. I, and so when you talk about marital things, you talk about friends, you talk about people uh, living together, and when I say that, I mean roommates, okay, church, in the name of Jesus, all right, roommates. Uh, um, and and. When we say those things, I, I'm a spender. Tamara is a saver. Okay, a saver. Y'all know if, that's the opposite, right? Yeah, every time you get together, you're going to have a spender, you're going to have a saver. In intimacy, uh, I'm a man. I'm a girl. Yeah, she's a woman. <laughs> and so there's nothing else to be said for that one. <laughs> and when okay, we're move on. When Keep we're going. talking about food... <laughs> We're talking about food. I grew up in a family where we were eating breakfast, and my mom would be talking about what we're going to eat that night for dinner. Can I get an amen? Uh, and so we love food and the texture of food and the smell of food and cooking the food. It's an experience. It's a relational, connectional experience. And Tamara um, could survive on the dew of the ginkgo leaf. I think that's from like Kung Fu Panda it or is. something. It is. She cares not of it. She did, you know, food. It couldn't be any more different. And then schedule, I want less schedule. Can I get an amen? amen. She wants more schedule. All right. So you see that what we're saying to you right from the beginning is that we don't have it figured out. We don't have it figured out. But we do know this. God is on his throne, and we're able to honor him and love him and grow in relationship with him and grow in relationship with each other. And we really, really want the best for you and hope that we can bring you some information that's going to be transformational for you. All right. Um, the material that we're, we're drawing from for the next sort of three weeks of our talks together, our messages, is called Life Model Works. Life Model Works. You're going to see... Uh, the website there, go and read if you want to delve into some deeper study and understand a little bit more. It's all about relational brain science. And then, of course, we want you to get ready for re-engage ministry, which is coming here in September. And we want you all to be a part of that. Sign up very quickly. We only have limited spots. It's going to be transformational in our church. So we hope to see you there. So if you want to turn to your Bibles, we're going to be looking today at James 4. Uh, we're going to yeah, take a look what at 1 and 4. We're just going to cursory look at those, right. and then we're going to land in Isaiah 
30:15. Isaiah 30:15. We're working with two assumptions today. Everybody needs more peace, right? Right. You need more peace on I-4. Can I get an amen? Uh, you need more peace when you're dealing with your kids. You need more peace when you're dealing with taking tests. You need more peace when you're getting a promotion. You need more peace with your best friend. You need more peace with people that you've broken relationship with. You need more peace with your spouse. You need more peace. We need peace. And we need to reconnect because we're all broken and we're triggered at times. And when we get triggered, we disconnect from each other. And that's the hurting and the fighting that goes on. And we hope to bridge that gap for you. The big idea for this weekend is quieting is the most effective way to receive peace and reconnect. So like Greg just said, we have these patterns and they have, we've built strong neural pathways in our brains. And so these patterns are how we respond immediately to things. And so when, um, when we get triggered because of our patterns, it causes us to disconnect. So I personally will, um, get triggered with fear. And so in an effort to not be afraid, I try to perform and get everything right, but then I can't be perfect. And so then that causes more fear. And the more I'm functioning in my fear and my performance, the less I'm able to connect with Greg or my children. So I'm suffering because I'm, I'm alone because I'm caught up in my pattern, and then my family suffers because I'm unable to connect with them when I'm caught up in that pattern. Uh, so if I'm triggered and I'm not uh, walking in peace, and it would be the same for Tamara, all of us have the opportunity to, to live in peace, right? Right. If you're not saturated with peace, you can be triggered, and my tendency would move into frustration and then anger. And I suffer because I'm alone. Um, everything that we go through causes us to be alone. And what we want to do is try to close that gap, to close the gap. So I'm alone, I'm suffering, and then she's alone and my family's alone or the partner that you work with is alone uh, and, and you're separated and broken. We, we uh, again, hope to uh, give you an opportunity to see some things today that would change that. So we're going to show you a little movie clip. There's a movie by Disney Pixar called Inside Out. Yeah. If you don't have small children and you haven't seen it, we do recommend you watch it. It's very cute. It's entertaining. Um, but just so that we give you a precursor so that you know what you're looking for, there's a family at the dinner table. They've just moved to a new city. And so there's a lot of stress over um, being alone and being in a new place. And so the dad, you'll see, is controlled by anger. And the mom is controlled by sadness, where the daughter is usually controlled by joy. But in this particular movie clip, she's actually, there's a battle taking place between fear, anger, and um, fear, anger, Not sure if it's resentment one. or I for, disgust. disgust. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's seen the movie. That's Thank right. you for helping your pastors out. That's right. <laughs> so we'll just take a look at the clip. <laughs> So, how was the first day of school? It was fine, I guess. I don't know. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Did you guys pick up on that? Sure mm -hmm. did. Uh -huh. Something's wrong. We're gonna find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Signal the husband. Uh-oh, she's looking at us. What did she say? What? Oh, oh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What? What is it, woman? What? Signal him again. Ah, so, Riley, how was school? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. For this, we gave up that Brazilian helicopter pilot? School was great, all right? What was that? I thought you said we were gonna act casual. Riley, is everything okay? <sighs> Sir, she just rolled her eyes at us. All right, make a show of force. I don't want to have to put the foot down. No, not the foot. Riley, I do not like this new attitude. Oh, I'll show you attitude, old no, man. No, 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 breathe. What is your problem? Just leave me alone. Sir, reporting high levels of sass. Take it to DEFCON 2. DEFCON 2. I don't know where this disrespectful attitude came from. You want a piece of this, Pops? Yeah, well, look. Prepare the foot. Keys to safety position. Ready to launch on your command, sir. Just shut up! Fire! That's it. Go to your room. The 
foot is down, the foot is down. Yeah. Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. Well, that was a disaster. <laughs> well, that was a disaster. That can describe a lot of our relational. How many times have you been in a discussion and you're like, that's not at all what I wanted to happen, right? That's not at all what I thought was going to happen, what I intended to happen. It's all the stuff that's inside of us. We get stuck in our, an emotional response and we're not our best selves. So what God wants to do is retrain us and retrain our brains so that the thing remains the thing. We've got to do hard stuff. We've got to talk about schedule and work and difficulties and resentment and all kinds of communication issues. But what happens is, is we get stuck and the thing that we're trying to talk about triggers us, triggers me, triggers you. And then the thing isn't the thing anymore because now we're dealing with the emotional response to the thing. The slow nods are coming. They're coming. The, the thing becomes the thing. James 4 says it's these reactive. Go read James chapter 4. Um, you know, the anger of man, James 1, the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. It, it's not the same thing. Uh, we're allowed to get angry but not sin. The Bible's real clear about that. James 4 says this. It's these reactive and healthy emotions that cause people who love each other to hurt one another. If we could help you today. Love the people that you love and not react. Would that be a good thing for you today? Would that be awesome? Come on, church. Would that be good? Amen. They're the source. These patterns, reactions, strong emotions, internal motivations, hidden agendas, they're what others experience when they interact with us. If you want to be really brave today, ask somebody that you love and that cares about you because it's important that they love you and care about you. Ask them this question. What is it like to be with me? just got real in the house right here. It got real here, South Shore, over the internet, it got real. What is it like to be with me? Because these are the patterns that people experience. You can say the right thing, try to do the right thing. You could say a Bible verse and then act completely opposite of the verse. It's, it's, it's very uh, hidden. It's deep inside of us. And those patterns, church, the ones that we express the ones that you go through, those patterns are what our children emulate. No matter what their theology is, no matter what you know, no matter what you say, they do what they see. And you're doing what you've seen. That's why discipleship has struggled so much in the church is because discipleship is impartation that comes from revelation. It's a relational reality between God and you and another person. And so it's not just learning something new that we need, it is becoming someone new that we need, church. It's becoming someone new that we need. It's not propositional truth, it's the change of the presence of a person so that we remain our best selves. I mean, it, for years, we had trouble figuring this out. How do we handle the business and be nice to each other at the same time? Come on, can I get an amen? Because you got to handle the business. How do you not get triggered and remain your best self in tough situations? Let's look at some of the brain science behind all this because this will help you understand even better. Our, our brains are hardwired with six unpleasant, six big unpleasant emotions. So we saw some of them in the movie. We've got, let me find it in my notes so that I say them all and you don't have to yell them out to me in the audience. <laughs> Fear, anger, sadness, disgust, and then those are ones that you are pretty common. You probably recognize those pretty easily, but maybe not so much shame and hopeless despair. But those are all hardwired in our brains. We all have them, and they're so powerful when they rise up. And oftentimes, like in the movie, people are unintentionally controlled by those emotions. And it's important for each of us as individuals to learn to recognize and identify what it is we're feeling. I went for years without being able to define what I was feeling. And Greg would say, what is it? What is it? And I'd say, I don't know. I don't know. I could not define it. So I've been on a very challenging journey for about a year and a half, actually, Great. where I've really started to pay attention. Because when you experience one of the big six unpleasant emotions, your body reacts. Maybe you've not noticed that before. But... Maybe your shoulders and neck tighten or your 
chest will tighten up or you'll feel a pit in your stomach or maybe if it's anger you might have burning in your stomach maybe you have tingling in your fingers like there are physical things that happen and when you if you can start to recognize and identify what's happening in your body then that helps you to be able to recognize and understand and define what's ha what emotion you're actually experiencing and god created our brains just so magnificently we have two sides of the brain. The left side of the brain is the logical side. It is the logical, it's the conscious side, it's mathematical, and it's verbal. So we call it the verbal logical explainer. And the right side of the brain is where emotions are. And so that's why it's all swirly over there. Hmm. On, on the right side of the brain, that's hmm. where the, the emotions and the creativity and the, it's the unconscious side. And it's much, much faster processing than the left side. And so in the right side of the brain, there are four levels. The very first level is where our attachments take place. So we have relational attachments to our parents or to our spouse or to our children, and then even to friends and coworkers and so forth. We all have level one relational attachment. Level two is called the personal reaction. How many of you have heard of fight, flight, or freeze? Yep. Have you heard that? Yep. Okay, yes, we got some yeses. Mm -hmm. um, that is called, that part of the brain is called the amygdala. And I just like the word amygdala. So I want everybody to say it, amygdala. <laughs> it's amygdala. just a fun word to say. <laughs> so the, the amygdala is where in one sixth of a second, the amygdala can determine if a situation is good, bad, or scary. Isn't that fascinating? So in one sixth of a second, if your amygdala decides that this is a scary or bad situation, your right brain shuts down and you shift over to the verbal logical explainer. You move over to the left side of the brain. Your emotions shut down. But what we want to learn is how to keep our right side, the right side of our brain active by moving into the third level of the brain and that's where the relational circuits are. So if we can remain relational when we're, so we can say that our amygdala gets hijacked when we experience one of the big six unpleasant emotions, okay, right? Mm -hmm. So if I feel afraid, my RCs, my relational circuits can shut down and then I never get to level four. And level four is where our identity is formed and strengthened. So if we want to be the best we can be. If we want to walk in the fullness of who God created us to be, we have to be able to stay in our right brain and get to that fourth level. And it happens with the Lord, and then it can happen with each other. That's right. And so <clears throat> um, she's going to read a couple of quotes uh, in a second to, to give you this distinction. You come into a circumstance at work, and you're trying to work something out, but it's, you know, everything at work isn't always easy. And so you're trying to work out um, a problem. You're trying to problem solve, but either the person you're talking to or you get triggered and now we're working. You can tell when your RCs go off because you can't listen to the person properly. You can't connect with the person properly and you stop seeing them. Something happens to your vision when your RCs go off and now you're not on relational mode in the right side of your brain. You've shifted to the left side and you're very mechanical. You might be right, but you lose relationship. Right. You might, be, you might win the argument with your spouse, but you lose your spouse. You might, you might be very precise in your understanding of a circumstance or a situation. You could describe it all, but that's not necessary. That's not what's necessary or most necessary in human interactions. What humans need are humans need to be heard and understood. Mm. Can I get an amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. How many? Well, 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 it's a little fuzzy right now, but we're coming. Yes. We're coming. Ch check out the, these quotes. So these quotes come from a book called uh, The Emotionally Healthy Church. So you can memorize entire books of the New Testament and still be unaware of your depression and anger, even displacing it on others. You can fast and pray half a day every week for years as a spiritual discipline and constantly be critical of others, justifying it as discernment. Or you can be extremely effective at work accomplishing great things for your company, but be an unloving spouse and parent at home. So, you can, so you've can. So you got this dichotomy. you got this thing working where you can know the truth. You can, even, you can even preach the truth. You can preach the truth to your kids. That's what we say to our kids all the time. Um, do what I say. Don't do what I do. 
and, and you get into this disparity with what you know, what your brain, what your brain knows in the left hemisphere and how you act in the right side of your brain. Right. And that's why discipleship has struggled so much in the church. The good news is you can build new neural pathways. You can interact with God. You can get your peace back. You can learn to reconnect your circuits and you actually grow a portion of your brain that didn't exist before. So whatever you missed when you were growing up, if you missed it, the good news is you can get it right now. You can start you today. Can. Isn't that amazing? So let's look at Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. This is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, in repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength, but you would have none of it. We reject that in the name of Jesus. We're going to receive from the Lord God Almighty. We're going to learn to get in quietness. We'll talk more about that in a second and receive peace. And our RCs are going to come back on. It's like the elevator on the right side of the brain. We're not going to get stuck in level two. We're going to go down to level three. We're going to be able to relate and connect with each other. And then we're going to become our best selves at level four. The goal is to go through hard things. You will not escape hard things in life. But the you goal can't is... Escape, you can't escape the big six unpleasant emotions. They are hardwired in your brain. You're going to experience them. But the fact is we can actually develop new neural pathways so that when we experience one of the big six, we don't stay there. We are able to recover much faster. Yeah, and, and the brokenness that you experience, the hurt, the pain, the disappointment, the disconnection... Um, can that gap can be bridged. And repentance means that I change my mind. I change my mind about what I'm thinking and I rebuild these neural pathways and rest. It doesn't mean to just sit and say, hum. It means that the rest that, and the quietness that you get is the salvation of your soul. It really means the heart of what God wants to do inside of you is to save your soul. Your spirit gets saved when you're, you're saved. But your soul doesn't get saved when you're saved. So your spirit now needs to inform your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And I want to make you a promise. If you ever connect the Holy Ghost to your mind and your will and your emotions, not only will you have a precise mind, but you'll be a great person. Right. You'll be great to be with. You'll be fun to be with. You'll, you will bring. Wouldn't it be awesome if you had enough of God inside of you? That everywhere you went, people saw God and they were lifted in their circumstance. Yeah. That's what it means to be a good person, to be discipled in the Lord. We've got a friend. His name is Oscar Mumba. He's a, a wonderful man of God out of Zambia, Africa. He comes each year for a sort of a prayer summit with us. And he stayed with us last year for seven days in our home. And we actually got to see this lived out. It is so countercultural to how we live in our country, how I live, how we live. He would go into the bedroom, had the side room. He would go in and he would be absolutely quiet. And, and we would just, we would, we're looking at each other like, is, is he okay in there? I mean, did something happen? He's quiet because he's quiet. And what he is doing is he's going before the Lord. You can do this if you're single. You can do this if you're married. We're going to give you some techniques, but you can do this if you're single. Go in before the Lord, and he would wait on the Lord, and then you'd hear him start to sing. And he would, just, he would sing songs. That's all on the right, right side of your brain. It's not what you know. It's who you're becoming. It's not what you know. It's who you're becoming. Quieting is the quickest way back into the grace of the Lord to peace and then to reconnect with others. And then he would come out of the room and when he came out of the room, he had so much of God on him, our whole household would change. Mm -hmm. Now, that was super cool. Yeah. It's a little spooky, but it was cool. <laughs> because he had been with God that significantly. So when the scripture says, in quietness and in trust is your strength, the joy, say it with me, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Is my strength. Say it with me again. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Is my strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It is the connection that you have with the Lord. And you cannot get it at the pace you're living right now. You can't. Right. You, you have to pause. Right. You, you have to pause and get some space there. So like Greg said in the beginning, I have a tendency to overschedule, which doesn't give me a whole lot of time, space, or energy to, to quiet. But would you like for us to teach you how to quiet? Because we've really been practicing Yes. And we promise it really works. It does. Would you like to know? Amen. They don't want to know. We'll go. <laughs> no, just kidding. Drop the mic. <laughs> so what we want to do, we want to give you an assignment this week that every day you're going to choose 10 minutes 
And so 10 minutes, that's not that intimidating, right? Choose 10 minutes when you are not being triggered because the goal is, the reason you're going to do this is because your body is going to start to experience peace. And so when your body is learning to experience peace, then you're going to be able to recognize when you're experiencing the big six and you're going to be able to identify it quicker. You understand? Are you following me? So for 10 minutes, you're going to, if you're married, be together. So you can be sitting or laying. You want to be chest to chest or back to chest. Guys don't get any ideas. That's not what this is for. This is for quieting. Have to qualify. But 10 minutes, you're not talking. So you're not talking to each other. You're not processing things. You're together. You're quieting. And what you'll find is you want to focus on your breathing because often we spend most of the day just breathing way up high in our chest, very shallow. And we want to deep breathe really deep into our diaphragms and then our bodies will start to relax. And during that time, the, what you're supposed to do is just think thankful thoughts. So you're not thinking about the list of things that you need to do when the 10 minutes is over. You have to take every thought captive and decide you're going to think thankful thoughts. Now, if God is the giver of all good things, then surely for 10 minutes you can think of things that you're thankful for because right. every good thing in your life came from him, right? And then another thing is you can make a top 10 list of your favorite memories. If it's like one of my favorite things is picking up shells at the beach. And so in my top 10, some of my favorites are when Greg and I have walked on the beach together and I'm finding shells and we're talking to each other, or when my daughter Lainey and I, she likes to find shells with me. Those are some of my favorite memories. So those are the things that you want to intentionally think about during your 10 minutes because as your body gets used to experiencing peace, then you will recognize when you're not experiencing peace and you'll be able to return to it during the big six. That's why you have to practice when you're not being triggered. So that just, we, I just went through that this week. On Thursday, it was the first day of school, and I went to pick Zeke up from school. I had no idea he would get in the car negative. I totally anticipated he was going to hop in the car, and I was going to say, how was your day? And he'd say, fine. And I'd say, how are your teachers? They were great. How was lunch? Fine. Did you see your friends? Yes. Like, I thought it was just going to be, like, normal, almost rote, right? Because he's a boy. So he's not going to get in and tell me every detail of his day <laughs> like I wish he would. But so he hops in the car and he had some negative experiences from that day. And I got triggered. I got triggered into fear so quick. So I'm driving home. We're on the interstate and I am tense and my chest is tight. And I'm, and then I felt it and I was like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? So I relaxed my body and I took deep breaths and I was thankful. I didn't say them out loud yet. I was just thankful inside like, okay, thank you God for this great school. And that, you know, this today does not define the rest of the year and you love Zeke more than I do. So you're going to take care of this. And then I looked over at him because what's happened is I got triggered. I shut down. So now my kid who just told me he had a hard day needs me and I can't connect with him <laughs> because I'm so focused on what's happening in me. So after I got myself calmed down, I said, hey, buddy, let's take a minute and let's just breathe a couple times together really deep. And then I was thankful out loud with him to try and help him learn how to do it as well. So we arrive home and I think, okay, we're all good. Except I didn't really think about it when I got out of the car. Instead, I got out of the car. I couldn't wait to go in and tell Greg. So I went in and I start telling him what Zeke told me when he got in the car. And before I knew it, I was triggered again. <laughs> and then I was like, ha, 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 ha. Because I'm never intense. I don't know why he would have a reaction like that. I mean, there's no intensity in me at all, ever. I can be a little overwhelming at times. If I scare you in the lobby, please don't run away. It's good. So good. It's so good. Because I, 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 I think all of us can be a little scary uh, at times. I know, triggered, I know, sure. I know, I know I can be. So I'm triggered. She's triggered. And we had a it was a it was a stressful week. I want to talk to guys for just a second, and then I'll, and then I'll kind of bring that to a conclusion to say this sounds strange. And so when it was introduced to us by Life Model Works, some wonderful people there, I said, okay, let me understand this. We're gonna be on the couch together, chest to chest, and um, we're not. This isn't cuddling, and it's not praying together, and we're not trying to resolve anything. He's like, right. I'm like, okay, dokey. That sounds amazing. And for the first several times we did it, I have to 
confess to you the first. So when you think about things that make you happy or joyful or whatever it is, I'm thinking, wow, this feels pretty good. I, I think, you know, this is, this is fine. We could lay chest to chest all day long. That's great. But you have to get past that and you have to settle your mind. And what happens is your brains come into rhythm, but more importantly, your hearts come into rhythm. The anxious heart Sometimes mine's more anxious than hers, and the anxious heart will come into rhythm with the, the slower beating heart. It is actually supposed to be a model of what you do in your relationship and your quiet time with God, that you get into a brain rhythm and a heart rhythm with the Father, that you actually, when you, you recognize that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, right? You want to tap into Him. And so your breathing, is, this is very countercultural for us. It's going to take you five, seven, eight minutes of that 10 minutes to get your breathing regulated and to get your mind calmed down. And you, you will be amazed. If you struggle with your prayer life, that's when prayer happens. If you struggle with what is this going to look like, that's when it happens. Whenever you get to that place where you're at peace. Everybody say peace. peace. We need more of it, don't we? And, and so you can do this as a couple. You can do it independently you can do it with a friend. You probably don't want to hire somebody to stand in and cuddle with you, okay, in the name of Jesus. Um, that might get weird. But it's not cuddling like you used to think cuddling. It's, it's, it's quieting. You, you want to get quiet. So the example that Tamara gave, we were both, it was a very stressful week this week, very stressful, big ministry things, big opportunities, big difficulties, preparation together. If you've never done anything like this, it's quite challenging to get the rhythm uh, and to move through it together. And here's the greatest thing in the whole world. Uh, this, this, is, this is why I hope you leave here and you practice this, that you actually take those moments and you'd say, this is part of our solution and it's revolutionary, I promise you. Out of all the things that we've studied and done, this is the most significant thing I think we've ever done together, all right? Here's the greatest thing. What would have taken us days, if you go back, years, months, weeks, and if you've been through trauma and you're, while you were growing up, this is in particular very important for you, very important. What would take us days or weeks, and sometimes the, the folks that we're talking to right now, even months of, of disconnecting from each other, and, and uh, maybe you're in that situation right now. Maybe you're in a situation where you have a disagreement and then you're triggered and they're triggered and every time you see each other, you, you approach this and you're triggered all over again and it's months before you ever come back into relationships. Stonewalling, negative emotions, unhealthy coping, anger, resentment. So what happens is you separate, they separate, you end up coping, they end up coping and you lose intimacy. And this happens with a roommate, it happens with a cousin, an aunt, an uncle, a mother, a father and in marriage. Everybody with me? Yes. It happens really, really quickly. Instead of it taking days or weeks or months, uh, I was triggered, she was triggered, and, and pretty significantly, I'll say. This was, this was because of the crescendo of getting all this stuff together, school starting, so on and so forth. Um, and at one over point... Overscheduling. Overscheduling. It's just a little... I any, Anyway, <laughs> um, I, at one point, we were like, okay, we need to sit and quiet. And I was like, I don't want to quiet. I don't, I don't want to quiet. And we tried to quiet. We tried to sit together. It's the thing that you don't want to do the most. It's the thing that you don't want to do the most. But we were quieting, and then we kind of raised up again. And I, I moved over, and I sat on the other side of the couch. I, I moved over to the other couch, and we talked for a minute. And then she's like, come here. Come, come back over here. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, and, I, and I got into the quieting position, and it was a tough sledding for her and for me but what used to take us days took us about 30 minutes. And at and the end of the 30 and minutes. The, and the roles have switched too. There have been times where he's like, come on, let's quiet. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to quiet. There so are going to be times when you don't want to quiet. It's not always me saying, come quiet, come quiet. Like he's really been leading us in the daily when we're not being triggered. He's the one that's saying, come on, let's quiet. Let's spend a few minutes. And it's building Building that quieting time when you're not triggered is what makes it possible for it to work when you are triggered. How many of you have really strong emotions? Come on. If you're Latin, raise your hand <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You, you, got strong, you got strong stuff in you. Mm -hmm. You need this. I can't tell you how bad you need this. I can't tell you how bad you need Because if you practice it when you're not triggered, you can use it when you're triggered. Right. I was, in a, I, was in a, I was in a meeting for translation, and in the meeting, we're about to talk about some difficult things, and I could feel myself shift, and I lost the person I was talking to. Mm -hmm. And then I said, God, here's the way this works. Because we've been practicing, God, help me 
see, relate, hear, understand. Listen, church, the thing, getting to the goal is secondary. The people are primary. Right, right. Shake your head with me. Relationship. Some of you are like, no, 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 it's about the goal. It's getting, you're going to get the goal. And so people that are super successful in life have there's a lot of times there's a scattered group of people around them that are devastated and they have a lot, but they're missing everything because they're missing the people that they love. And so if, if uh, you've been through trauma type A, all those things, or you, you want to preserve your marriage, this is really an important skill to have, an important, important skill. About 30 minutes, we were back in relationship, back seeing each other, back... Uh, laughing and enjoy, and 30 minutes was the hardest thing in the world, but I want to say it's better than two weeks, isn't it? Yes. Better than two <laughs> weeks. Better. better than two weeks, all right? So again, the big idea for this weekend is quieting is the most effective way to receive peace and reconnect. So our prayer for you this week is that you will practice this, that you will be able to receive this peace from the Lord and be able to remain connected to each other. Amen. Can we thank the Lord today? Can mm. we thank him? All right. Both campuses, what we want to do is, is that we're going to ask you to stand right now. Would you stand with us? And let's not transition away from the peace of the Lord. Ask for prayer partners to come forward. This is the most important part of the service that we have on the weekends, and that's that we remain right here. We remain, we remain right here, okay? Prayer partners, you come forward. And what I mean by remaining right here is that we, we process and finish what God's doing with us. How many, of you, how many of you, in a simple practice together, want to gain the peace of the Lord and reconnect and not fight? Amen. Yep. Amen. Yep. Yeah. I know. You don't want to fight anymore. You don't want to be confused. You don't want to misunderstand each other. You know, I've heard so often the critical talk, either a male talking about a female, female talking about a male, don't understand them, never will understand them, all those things. I want you to know that God's the great interpreter. He's the great interpreter. And if you'll go to him... And you can do it in the presence. It's best done. You actually, when we're together, you're actually creating a part of your brain that didn't exist before. It's a relational circuit that's actually, the, the brain mapping is incredible because they see brain cells grow in the area of that third level on the right side, third and fourth level, and we get to retain who we are, okay? And so we got to first connect with God in order to do it. Maybe you, you've been here today and you're saying, I don't know the God that you're talking about, but I want the peace that you're talking about. I want that. I want that peace. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to confess the Lord Jesus as Savior. We're going to do it very, very, it comes right out of the scripture in Romans 10, 9 and 10. Let's say this together. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, give you my life. I give you my life. I give you all of my life. I want the peace. I want your presence. You know I have sin. Now church, listen, if you're brand new, what that means is resistance to doing it his way. Just saying, I got this, God. I got this. I'm going to stay busy. I'm going to stay barren. I'm going to stay confused. I'm going to stay foggy. I'm going to stay stressed, anxious, angry, mad, disappointed, hurt, separated, all that stuff. This prayer is to say, I don't want that life. I want a different life. I want a different life. I want you to do something different. Say, God, I receive you. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come to live in me now. I receive you. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, either campus, you're at home somewhere, you're in the state of New York, or you're in Qatar serving our great country, can we thank our military church? Come on, give them a big hand. God bless you. Thank you so much. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand on the count of three across campuses, on the count of three, real big, from the shoulder. Okay, one, two, three. If you trust in Christ, raise your hand nice and tall. Nice and tall. Raise your hand. Nice and tall. I see you. I see you. I see you. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. Who else? We miss you. Where are you at? Will you raise your hand again? I see you, sweetheart. Oh, that's so wonderful. God bless you. Who else? Anybody on this side? I don't want to miss you. Raising your hand saying, I'm giving my life to Jesus today. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. I sure don't want to miss you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to pray for you. And then my, my admonition, my encouragement is that you continue to let the Lord do what he's doing. And if you need prayer, you come. If you need prayer for healing, you need prayer for your marriage, you need prayer for your health, whatever it is, come and let us pray for you. But don't bolt yet. 
All right? Don't bolt. Let the Lord do what the Lord is doing right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you want to minister to us. I pray for open hearts and open minds. God, those that are confused, clear that confusion. Anybody who is um, who's struggling with, I don't know, I guess it would be called depression. Or you just, you're numb. You just can't feel anything anymore. God, wake our soul back up. Amen. Hurt and disappointed and run roughshod over and broken over and over, disappointed over and over and over. And they want to believe. Here's what the Lord's saying to me. You want to believe so bad. You just can't believe that it's that good or that easy. And you've tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. I, I want to encourage you. Listen, try again in the name of Jesus. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Father, meet, meet the need, every need that's here. In Jesus' name, amen. We're just going to worship for just a moment, and then Pastor Toussaint's going to come out, and uh, he'll dismiss you after that. God bless you.